Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I've got a couple of things to cover here in the, uh, in the start of this video and then I'm going to dive into the topic. Now the topic is something that comes up, honestly it's come up in a couple of emails recently and a couple of comments. And while I did a video about this a number of years ago, there's no point digging back through the history to find that because things have changed a little bit. I wanted to update that and cover it, frankly, in a bit more depth. So this video is all going to be about comparing presets and LUTs in Luminar Neo. What are the differences? What are the pros and cons? How do they work? That sort of thing. But first, a couple of housekeeping items. The first one is there's a huge, huge summer sale on Luminar Neo going on right now through June the 14th. And they've got, it's basically a Black Friday kind of deal. It's a huge summer sale up to 50% off in some cases. And you can save an additional 10% using this coupon code, which I can't remember, so I'll put right there. But that coupon code will give you another 10% off. And yes, that is a way to support me. No charge to you. In fact, of course, you're saving money, but you use that credit uh, or coupon code, and they're going to credit me for that sale and give me a small referral commission. So thank you in advance if you do that. And again, it goes until June 14th. Now, in return, um, I've, uh, uh, I sit here on YouTube every week and make videos about this stuff. So you get a free bunch of training if you show up here and check out my videos, which I appreciate. So thank you for that. This video today is specifically, as I said, about presets and LUTs and what the differences are and the pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. So I started writing up uh, all the things that I wanted to talk about. And then our, uh, just simply because, honestly, I get a little forgetful and uh, it's hard to always refer to my notes. So I started writing it up and then I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give away this chart because this is helpful. I mean, this is a pretty good amount of information here. So I'm going to give you this chart if you'd like it. You can, of course, screenshot it from this video if you want to. Uh, the other way you can get it is if you subscribe to my newsletter, it's on my free download page. So once you subscribe, you get an email that says, click here to get your free stuff. This is one of the free things. I also give free presets and I give some skies, textures, and LUTs. So uh, if you want to join my newsletter, link is down below. Let's get going on what the difference is, the pros and cons and all that are about presets and LUTs. And so uh, this chart here, I'm going to go through this in as much depth as I can to really help you understand what the differences are. But a preset is made in the app. So that's, that's applicable regardless of which app you're talking about. I'm, of course, talking about Luminar Neo. But most of what I say here is also... Um, true in other apps, but I'll try to point out differences where I can. Presets in uh, Luminar Neo are made in Luminar Neo and therefore are specific to the app. That's the first two points here. You make them in Neo and they're specific to Neo. In other words, you can't use a Luminar Neo preset in Lightroom or on one or some other app. It ain't gonna work. It only works where it's made, which is in Luminar Neo. Now that's different than a LUT because a LUT is made in a different app. There's, there's LUT generators. There's lots of different ways you can make apps, uh, or excuse me, make LUTs, different apps that you can use. I've made LUTs in Pixelmator Pro, for example, in the past. But a LUT is not made in Luminar Neo. It's made in some other app. But the cool thing is it's a portable kind of thing. It is a tool that will work in multiple apps. So any app that has LUT support, which is, of course, Luminar, but also on one. I, I'm assuming Photoshop, although I don't do it there, maybe Lightroom, probably Affinity, lots of different apps, and, and you can look it up. I'm focused on this app, of course, but um, if you create a LUT in an app and use it, um, you can use it in multiple apps. So, of course, it works in Luminar, but it works in other apps, uh, and that's because um, it's, a, it's a portable file format. It's kind of like a PDF. Not really, but... That's the best example I have. It's a file that is so standard that it can be used or applied or seen in multiple apps. Like a PDF can be seen on multiple devices, whereas a preset has a file extension that's very specific to that app. So in Luminar, I believe it's .lnp, Luminar Neo Preset, or if you have a preset collection, it would be in .lnpc, .luminar Neo Preset Collection. But again, that file extension is very specific in particular to the app, in this case, Luminar, whereas a LUT is basically a cube file, .cube, and it's, uh, it's applicable in any app that will support LUTs, which is quite a bit of them. So the, um, the thing with LUTs is they were really historically used in uh, filmmaking, right, in cinema. So if you ever see a particular film and you're like, hey, what is this? you know, every scene looks kind of the same. Maybe it's kind of moody, a little bit dark. Maybe it's got a certain color tint to it. 
probably what's happened is they've stuck a LUT onto that film in order to give it that certain look. And that in helps ensure consistency, which I talk about here. But what does a LUT do? It actually remaps color and tone values from whatever uh, it originally is to whatever the LUT tells it to do. So it kind of says, anytime you have this, make it do that. And anytime you have that, make it do that. So it, it's, it's a remapping tool, but it's only for color and tone values. You're not gonna uh, increase detail or sharpness or structure or any of that with a LUT. And that's one of the big differences is that a preset, as you can see here, it contains multiple adjustments. It has color and tone values, but a preset can contain a lot of other things. It could have a new sky in it. It could have a texture in it. It could have detail enhancements. It could have masking, things like that. So a preset, again, specific just to Luminar, can contain really any edit that you could do in Luminar. So that's the difference uh, at a high level is because it's specific to the app, it can contain anything that you can do in the app, whereas a LUT is really just color and tone values. All that other stuff, new skies, detail, structure, or whatever, not going to be applicable in a LUT. And so for me, I think of presets as being a bit more flexible and customizable because as you can see right here, you can edit uh, the tools that are in the preset, you can adjust them, you can add or remove them, and you can even save new presets with any changes that you make. It's basically fully customizable, and also nowadays you can also adjust the opacity. The thing with the LUT is it's pretty limited. You can adjust opacity, contrast, and saturation, and that's it. And the actual look of the LUT is fixed. There's you don't get to look under the hood at a LUT and see what the tools are and figure out, hey, I want to adjust those. You can just apply the LUT change the amount, change the contrast and saturation, and that's it. Whereas a preset, you can change anything uh, and everything that's in the preset, including removing tools or adding tools to it in order to further change it. And of course, you can save a new preset, and we'll talk about all that. Um, the other thing too is a preset, it applies to the entire photo. You click it, the whole photo gets edited, uh, unless there's a mask involved. Whereas a LUT, you can actually use a LUT and then mask it in with the masking tool uh, any of the masking tools, just to a certain specific part of a photo. So that's pretty handy. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other thing that's interesting, I think, is that a preset, it's basically one preset. You click on preset, it applies to the photo, and you're done. Unless you go edit the preset, add more tools and things like that. But you can only use one preset because you don't have a way to add, to stack them. You don't have an adjustment layer that you can put a second or third preset and mask it in. So the preset is essentially applied to the photo and then you can go edit from there. Whereas you could um, take multiple LUTs and stick them onto a photo. You could add a LUT and mask it into one place, take another LUT and mask it into another. So a lot of flexibility there. For me, a preset is how you start an edit. Uh, you don't uh, make changes to a photo and then go apply a preset. And that's because this next point, a preset overrides any adjustments that were made prior to the preset being applied. Because a preset is a specific collection of tools all bundled together, which is a set of instructions. It says, hey, Luminar, do this. And you click it, and it does that. And what that also means is it discards anything that you did before. So that's why you use a preset at the start, because otherwise, if you do a bunch of stuff and then add a preset, you lost all the stuff you did early. So uh, I LUT. A LUT is not something that you start and edit with. And a LUT to me is a finishing touch. You use it late or maybe at the very end of your edit as a uh, interesting touch or maybe to apply that level of consistency that I talked about earlier or just to uh, slightly enhance colors or tones or whatever, things like that. So in other words, it's incremental and or complementary to a preset. You can have a preset and then add a LUT to it, uh, which leads us really into the next one. A preset can actually contain a LUT. So a LUT can be baked into a preset, but a preset is never gonna be a component of a LUT. And then of course, kind of related to the other stuff up here, a preset can stand alone. You can click on a preset and that can be your edit to a photo. Now, presets are often positioned that way, and I say that sometimes, but generally speaking, uh, to me a preset is a starting point, but start is the key word there. Start with the preset, you don't start with a LUT. A LUT to me does not stand alone. It's only color and tone values. And it's honestly never complete. It can give a nice finishing touch, which is why I use it later or at the end of an edit, not early or at the beginning, because I don't feel like it stands alone. I feel like it always requires more editing, including develop raw. If you have a raw file, I think you absolutely want to start with develop raw before you get into adding LUTs. And so that is my whole chart. And again, I'll uh, give that to anybody that subscribes to my newsletter. Feel free to do that below. And let's just take a look at a photo now. 
Okay, so I have this photo. It is a raw file. I've done nothing to it. I'm going to go ahead and click on presets because remember, preset is a place to start. It's not a place uh, to finish. So don't make other changes first. So I've got some presets I'm working on for like sunset and all those kind of times of day. And I'll be talking about that in a future video, but I've got some of them made. I've been working on it. But there you go. I just clicked on a preset. You can see what it did to the photo. My photo started like that, and it now looks like that. And I have the ability to come in here and reduce opacity, which uh, reduces the intensity of that overall look on the photo. I'm just going to leave it at 100 because I like it. And of course, you have a couple of options here. You can click on Edit, and that will take you to the Edit tab. I'll show you that in a minute. You can rename it, you can delete it, or you can get into Finder if you want to take a look at it. But I'm going to click on the three dots, and I'm going to click Edit, which is the same thing as clicking on Edit here, and then going to the Edit tab. I'll show you. If I click on Edit, it takes me over to this Edit tab, and it drops me on the Edits tab here. So remember, the main tools are on the Tools section. And edits, you know some edits are applied when there's a little white dot up there that says, hey, we've got some edits. So the preset contains these tools. And again, before and after, before and after. Made a nice uh, impact to my photo. But let's say I want to go apply a LUT to it. Maybe I just want to take a LUT and stick a LUT on there to give it an additional look, right? So I'm going to go down here to the Mood tool. Mood is where LUTs reside. So you click on that. And you've got some options here, including a drop-down menu to help you choose your LUT. So you can get down here. You can add your custom LUT files. You can get more LUTs, which is in the Luminar Marketplace. And then they've got multiple categories, cinematic toning, creative cross-processing, and portrait toning. Now, there's also a custom LUT section, and that's because I've added my own LUTs, which I also do sell on my website if you want to check those out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get this lovely light because I think that one looks pretty nice. And you'll notice that it defaults to 30. So remember, I've got a preset, and I just stuck a LUT onto the photo as well. So if I hold the, uh, the quick preview down and turn that off, you can see that's the preset applied to the photo. And now when I let go of this, you can see that's the LUT. Now, what I'm going to do is to make this more obvious and not attractive at all, I'm going to move this to 100 because that's going to give you uh, 100 on the LUT. And that will more easily help you understand or see what it's doing to the photo. I don't recommend going to 100. That would be very, very much for a photo. But there it is, my photo with the preset on it. And there it is with a LUT. Now, it's overdone and overcooked. But, you know, it's it's not, I mean, it is over the top. But it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's, it's kind of bad. But um, what I recommend doing is coming in and just playing with the amount slider to figure out where you want it to be. It defaults to 30, and I think it looks pretty good at 30, again, before and after, but uh, maybe I like it at 50. So I can come up to 50, and now at 50, the before and after looks pretty good. Now here's the other thing that you can do with a LUT I talked about, and that's masking. So I could come in and say, hey, I really like that LUT. Let's look at it again. There it is before, and there it is now but maybe it's a little too much in the reflection. So maybe I just want it in the top half of the photo. Just an example. You can come into mask, you can get linear gradient, and let's say I just click and drag this here, and I'll just fade it a little bit with that gradient slider, and just make that a bit of a gradual fade. I don't know if that's really gonna look great, but now my LUT is applying just to that top part of the photo and not to the bottom, which I think actually does look a bit better. So LUT, on top of a preset at 50% amount, which is like opacity, and then masked into the top of the photo. So I'm able to customize with masking where the LUT is going in the photo. So now if you look at it, it's really just the top half of the photo that's being adjusted. So if I hold this down, you can see there's the photo with just the preset, and let go of that, and there it is with the LUT applied just to the sky. So you have some customization and some flexibility if you would like to. But let's say I want to do a different LUT. I could come in here. I've also got some monochrome LUTs. Maybe I'll come in here and get my Monomania 2. And you'll notice at 30, it's still some color shining through. And that's because it's a monochrome LUT, but you won't get the full monochrome effect unless you use the full effect of the LUT. So keep that in mind. If you apply a monochrome LUT and it's at 30 or anything less than 100, really, it's going to look like, hey, this isn't really black and white, and that's because at 100 it's fully black and white, but when you start reducing the opacity, you're also reducing the amount of black and white that's coming through. So at the default of 30, you've only got 30% of the black and white coming through. So if I hold that down, there it is before, 
with my preset, remember, so all those colors are adjusted and the sunset looks nice, but with this black and white monomania, um, what I call it monomania two, with that LUT applied, and I uh, show you that, it's slightly desaturated, and that's again because the, um, the entire LUT is not coming through. And the last thing is, let's go back to that uh, first LUT, which was lovely light, and let's say I really like it at 40% across the entire photo, I can now come into the actions menu at the very bottom, click on that and click save as preset. And it's going to come up and it's going to take the name of the preset that I had and it adds a one to it. And I can just come in here and just say LUT. So now I can say sunset to LUT. And that's going to tell me that it's my sunset to pro, uh, preset with a LUT applied to it. And honestly, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I might just use that one. Who knows? But that's how you can take a preset, apply it to your photo, stick a LUT on it, include that LUT as part of the preset and save it as its own preset with the LUT inside of it. So going back to my chart, again, free download if you want to do that or just take a screenshot here, you know, whatever. But I wanted to go through a comparison here of presets and LUTs and how they work in Luminar Neo and what they do. But honestly, I truly think that they complement each other and it's not really an either or. I think uh, sometimes it's an uh, and both really. Just a lot of customization and flexibility, but I just wanted to point out LUTs are really just around color and tone values, and presets are uh, capable of impacting really anything in the photo, including details, adding a new sky, whatever it might be. So lots of power and flexibility really in both, and they do work well together, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the differences are and the pros and cons of each of them and how you can use them in editing your photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. Don't forget about the Luminar sale. Sign up for my newsletter if you like. I'll be back soon with more uh, videos here talking about this kind of stuff. And if there are topics like this you would like me to address, just leave me a comment down below. Thanks, my friends. Take care. I'll be back soon. And until then, adios.